Some people wonder why I run eight miles before sunrise. Some people question my sanity when I put me first. Some people don't understand why I push my body to its limit. Some people call me crazy for choosing to run 50 miles. You know what we say to those people? Go find your own crazy. So why am I up so early? Because I'm a running coach and three of the five days of the work week, I get up at 4 a.m. in order to help other people with their running and fitness goals. Okay, let's go do warm-ups. Let's go out, let's go out in the parking lot. I'm Jennifer McMahon and I'm a 38-year-old wife and mother of two beautiful girls and I love what I do for a living. Hey, uh, Addie, do you want me to do your hair? I'm inspired by others, and when presented with a challenge, I don't ever want to be sitting on the bench. But I never, in a million years, thought I would accept this next challenge. I got this. I'm going to work out. I'm going to be able to run today. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Life is very busy these days. I'm Kara Wilson and I'm 42 years old. I spend most of my time taking care of others, my husband, my kids, and managing their busy schedules. The morning is the calm before the storm and it's the only time I have to relax and get ready for the busy day that's always ahead of me. Mm, my baby, how are you? <laughs> Where are you going? I have to run for a little bit. I don't want to run. <coughs> I have too many things to get done in the small amount of time that my kids are in school. Oh, it might be in my classroom. When I can, I try and take time for myself and run. It's the one thing I do that is only for me. I love having a goal. It's what motivates me. But what I didn't realize is where my new goal would eventually take me. Kara comes up to me at school and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing an ultra marathon and running 50 miles. Do you want to do it with me? Every day. I would sit in my car right before pickup. She would peek in and say, hey, what you reading? I said, oh, I'm reading your first ultra. And she's like, oh, man, you're crazy. Why are you doing that? So the whole time I kept trying to sell to Jen, Jen, come on, don't be a whip. Let's just do it together. It will be a fun adventure. Kara texts me and she goes, if we don't sign up by the end of the month, they tend to sell out. And then the next text I got was, I signed up for the American River 50 mile endurance race. She said, oh my gosh, for reals? And I said, yeah, this is for real, I'm doing it. I had to sit down and have a talk with my husband and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. 
but I, if I do it, I'm going to need your support and your help. She said she talked to her girls, and her girls were chanting, Mommy! Mommy! It was like a do or die moment. I had to decide, am I in or am I out? And it occurred to me that this thing was going to happen whether I did it or not. And I just decided um, to go for it. And she did it, and she signed up, and that's how we became partners. I'm quite the salesperson, I guess. Ultra running is a small, obscure sport. In 2019, there were just over 100,000 ultra marathon finishers compared to the half a million marathon finishers. It's a male dominated sport with women making up only 34% of the finishers. Ultra running is not for the faint of heart, but the truth is most people have no idea what is involved in running an ultra marathon. It takes months of training. It takes putting life on hold to run every day. It takes balancing family life with training life. It takes running thousands of miles just to be ready to run one race. Instead of standing next to thousands at the start line, you find yourself amongst hundreds. You will be all alone during many moments of the race. It's as much of a mental race as it is a physical race. You are going to get dirty. You will hurt. And you will probably cry. Instead of running for speed, you run to finish. And if you don't finish within a certain time, it doesn't count. I chose the American River 50 because it was a good race for beginners and intermediate runners um, that are looking to move into the ultra world. The Air 50 is one of the most iconic, it's one of the oldest races, oldest 50 milers in the country. So we're in a 39th year. What makes this race a little bit different than other trail 50 mile races is that this race has a combination of pavement, single track trails, wide fire roads, up and down, just rocky, technical. So it has a little bit of everything in the entire race from start to finish. So it doesn't kind of favor one runner um, over the others. The race begins in Folsom, California. The start line is drawn amidst the beautiful backdrop of Folsom Lake. But you won't see it because the gun goes off in darkness and the nearly 500 runners take off with only headlamps to light their way to the American River bike path. Pavement covers almost half of this race to the 25 mile point in a different town called Granite Bay, California. Runners begin to experience what distinguishes the AR-50, the technical terrain and the breathtaking views. Miles 25 to 50 is what's called the Pioneer Express Trail, so that was the old, old horse trails that were first established um, on this entire trail system here that we run in Auburn. After running 47 miles, it all comes down to the last gasp. Runners brace for the three mile vertical climb to the finish line in yet another town, Auburn, California. The elevation changes from 500 feet to 1,500 feet in that short time, and it separates those who finish and those who don't. If you aren't there within 14 hours, then you DNF. DNF, which means did not finish, would be for this particular race, the AR-50, 14 hours. It's, I think every runner's biggest fear in a race is that they would DNF and it means that you're not getting your medal, you're not getting your jacket. On the race page, if you were to look up my name, it would say DNF instead of a time. It would stick with you on a lot of those race sites that like put all your race times together. And so there was, there's a lot of fear on not finishing. Today I feel ready to train for the American River 50. We did our first big, big run, 10 miles, which is pretty crazy because this is only the second week and it's pretty intense, I'm not going to lie. Um, I finished it and the feeling you have when you see your car is the best feeling in the world. When Kara told me she was going to run 50 miles, I was very supportive. Um, I know that she'd been running for quite a while. It was completely within reality that she could do it, and she wanted to challenge herself. One of the training programs that Jen and I decided to follow is running your first ultra with Chrissy Mail. It's 
amazing because she gets you to cross train and to get you the high mileage without killing yourself. She understands when we're going to be injured or like sick. And so, you know, to relax on those days, to get better, to heal, and it's okay. Um, she always says, if you did at least 70% of this book, you'll be fine during the ultra. So that makes me feel good, but I want to do a little bit. I want to try to do 100%, so I'll be really great. But if I only do with 70% or 80%, I'm not going to be down on myself. I think it's important to her because um, she really is into it and she's really training a lot lately. Um, she's been doing like 50 miles a week and um, it really does seem like that she really does want to do this race. When Jen told me she was going to run an ultra marathon, a 50 miler, I was a little hesitant um, because I knew how long the training was going to be. I knew if she signed up for this, it was just gonna take more time out of me being able to be with her. But that's obviously a selfish thought, but that was my first thought. Once she kind of got into it and signed up for it and, and locked in, I was I'm extremely impressed with everything she's doing and the fact that she's kind of stuck with it and stayed on the schedule, it's impressive. What seems a little crazy is that to train for a 50 mile race, you have to run about 1,200 miles over a six month period. Think of that like running from Redondo Beach, California to Seattle, Washington. But what's cool about it is that I'm running mileage that's still pretty long, and now it's getting easier and easier for me to do that. Today I feel encouraged. Uh, my leg's been bothering me on my runs the last few days, but yesterday I had a rest day and today I felt great so I feel like the rest day really did me some good and now I'm back on track still gonna see the PT on Wednesday but I'm not as worried about it now okay so this is the part where I'm in the middle of nowhere well I mean rich people whatever but anyway there's no public restroom and all I have to do is go to the bathroom and pee and every time I'm running starts jiggling inside, and I wish I was the guy at this moment. That's probably why there's more guy runners. Ugh. I feel like a million bucks um, since I went pee, so now I'm gonna run much harder. That was really tough, three and a half miles there. I thought that if you put my mom and Jen into a jar, that it would be a jar of nuts, because they're crazy for running 50 miles. I mean, I could never do it. I do think people think we're crazy. Yeah, like most people say to me, you mean you're gonna run 50 miles like all at once? Or like in like three days? The minute we say one day, one race, just us, 50 miles. You're crazy. You're going to get hurt. Well, when Jen told me she was going to run an ultra marathon, I, I originally thought it was kind of crazy. Uh, but I realized how much she loves to run. I guess the biggest thing for me now is that she enjoy it and, and not get hurt. I think what people don't understand is if you train properly or you train for anything, you can do anything you want to if you put your mind to it. And it's, it's absolutely amazing what you can do if you push yourself. Yeah, you just have to put the work in. Yeah, and, and that part I don't find crazy. I don't find us running 50 miles crazy anymore. Yeah. Because I feel like we are putting in the mileage. It's not as scary. I think the big story for Kara is um, that anyone really at any age can begin to do something they never thought they could do before. But it does take a commitment, it does take discipline, and it takes a very positive attitude towards the whole event. Kind of early on when I started building up mileage, my calf and shin started bothering me a bit, and I started getting some weird pains. Um, but I went to go see a PT. So tell me what's been going on, what you're feeling, how this all started. Okay, so the first thing that made me want to, to come see you was I was having this like weird pain. It's really felt more like my shin. Yep. But then 
it's gone through so many phases of what it feels like that now I don't even know that that's the biggest problem anymore. Okay. I'm training for an ultra marathon. An ultra marathon. Yeah. Okay. So I'm putting a lot of miles on, and um, and I've been rolling, I've been stretching, and um, then I started realizing where I think it was coming from was really my calf muscle being really tight. Okay. Do you feel the difference in your ability to stay in control on the left versus the right? No. Okay. You're way more in control here than you are here. This is oh. okay. all over the place. Yeah. Time to even train for any kind of marathon, oh let alone an ultra. So two hard. I know. I'm wondering how I'm going to do more mileage next week. Yeah. I'm like, I'm barely getting it in now. She actually determined that it really wasn't coming from my calf or shin at all, but that actually was stemming from a weak hip. And so she gave me some glute and hip strengthening exercises so that I could um, take the pressure off my lower leg a bit. And that has helped immensely. Today I feel pretty worn out. It was my first run back after being sick with the flu and it was so hard, but I did it. I did six miles and I only coughed for about three or four of them. <laughs> That's it. I'm behind on mileage now, but I know I'll get back there. Um, I just really hope that this run didn't set me back any in terms of sickness. I'm midway through a six mile run. Look how beautiful it is. Um, I'm feeling stronger, I think mostly because I'm getting a little bit lighter in the weight and that just helps with less to carry. So I'm happy about that. Um, and I solved my bathroom issues again today. Yay! It's the problem with hydrating. All right, back to running. My training philosophy is just to do what this lady is telling me to do every day. Um, she has it all outlined. Week 27, rest. Tuesday, run 15 miles. Wednesday, run five miles. Friday, run 14 miles. But the one good thing is that Jen and I are both sharing RunKeeper together. So we keep each other accountable. Um, I know what our schedule is for the week. She knows what my schedule is for the week, and we see the mileage popping up, and we go, okay, good. Jen's getting it in. Kara's getting it in. The story, I think, with Jen and Kara is that they decided to challenge one another, and they, what I have seen is they have bonded with each other, included their families in the preparation for their race, and I think it's about daring to be, to, to reach a goal that may even have seemed impossible at some point. So I think they're very inspiring to, I know to me, to their children who have participated, and probably to their husbands as well. I really like running by myself, just listening to my music, because sometimes I feel when you run with a group of people, you do feel the pressure of making sure you complete whatever run you started off to do, um, and running their pace. You don't want to set people back. I think in our heads we had always decided to run together, and then we had discussed it and decided to do it, but yeah, our training styles are so different. And I think part of it was just circumstance. She trains during the day when the kids are at school. And I train a lot early in the morning before my kids are up. And I do a lot of running with my running campers. What's it all about, Anne? Inspire. OK, inspire on three. One, two, three. Inspire! inspire. I feel a little nervous. It sounds a bit silly, but I usually run in groups or with a partner or somebody and a buddy. And today I'm doing a 10 mile run solo, which I know Kara does all the time, but I really don't that much. So um, I'm actually looking forward to it a little bit because it'll be some time to clear my head and listen to podcasts or music. Um, but you know, it's kind of a little 
test to see if I can do it. So my lower leg has been hurting for a while and I'm gonna probably see a massage therapist or whatever about it, but I was, I ran into the high school coach, track coach, and he was telling me it's because we're low on magnesium when that happens and you're not getting enough electrolytes. Then he said that you should go to the store and get emergency and you should drink it after your workout. It will give you back your electrolytes, your salt. He said, even if you take salt tabs, that's good too. I can't speak for Jen, but I know that I'm shacking in the uh, electrolytes. I have been. And water too, quite frankly. The most difficult part for me um, during the training is is being injured. Okay, so the first month it went by perfectly, couldn't ask for a better month. The second month I tried a new pair of shoes, they were fitted incorrectly and unfortunately it causes severe pain and that caused a little bit of a, a leg injury. Later talking to some other people and experts, maybe I needed to stretch more and move other parts of my body because I've been focusing so much on the running, it's been a little rough. Being a working mom and doing the training has probably been the hardest part of my training so far. I mean, the kids have been great and really supportive, and so has my husband. The biggest thing is when I have things going on at work and when I have projects going on that I'm super excited about, while I'm really excited about them, it feels like the mileage I have coming up falls on the back burner. And that's been tough for me because all of a sudden it's like, okay, tomorrow you have to run 26 miles or tomorrow you have to run 31 miles. And I haven't been as focused as I'd like to be on my hydration and my stretching and all of that self-care that I think I need more than I'm giving to myself. And yeah, that's, that's been my biggest struggle so far. Laundry. I haven't done laundry. I just do it to keep up with my racing um, and training. And then I forget about the kids. They, I'm like, look, you're on your own now. You gotta start doing your own laundry. Um, I do have to pass some responsibilities to people now because of my training. And once the mileage started creeping up, I would tell them I'm too tired. I, I can't cook tonight. I'm too tired. We need to go out to eat. But I always try to make it to all their practices and everything that they do. I am starting to feel a little guilty as we get closer to race time. I'm gonna miss a big volleyball tournament for my daughter. I'm gonna miss a lot of things that are coming up. I told them I'm trying to do the best that I can. We just have to work around it. Another challenge is fitting the training into family day-to-day -day events and our extensive travel schedule. It's easy to take the, this, the easy path in life on a day-to-day -day basis. It's easy to go to work, come home, have dinner, relax on the couch, watch a movie, which is what my schedule is. And Jen constantly adds these wrinkles to her life that keep her fresh and keep her on her toes. And I think that's the most inspiring part. Because she does that, she probably gets more out of life than a lot of people do. When I see my mom running, I feel proud. When I'm older, I might run 50 miles just like my mom, because it would be nice to follow in my mom's footsteps. Good morning. Today I feel grateful that I have all these lovely runners to run with every day. This is a shout out to all the people that say hi to us on the trails that high five us, that wink at us and say, I got you man, I'm doing the same thing. Thank you. And to the old man on the strand yesterday who told me, you got this, keep on going. I was like, yeah, I got this. And I ran an extra mile longer than I was supposed to. It makes a big difference when you just have one person say, you got it, you're a champion. In our family, we always say, um, be a champion today. She's a champion, you know, she's pushing herself to, to do her best. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. People are following us. 
They want to see where this journey is going to take Jen and I. And I always say, it's not about if we complete it. They, it's, 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 wow, you were brave enough to even try it. You're brave enough to try something outside your comfort zone. And it doesn't have to be about running. It could be about anything. And everyone in the community is really pulling together and trying to help us. I remember telling my runners at work, like, I'm thinking about doing this crazy race. And it was so cool because many of them were like, do it. I want to be a part of it. I'm going to be on your race crew. And all of a sudden, it felt like I had this cheering squad behind me. And I think they were a big part of convincing me that I could do it. And this feeling that I was inspiring people was, was powerful. The crew that is helping us is quite amazing. How are you guys feeling? They're doing things I never anticipated and expected. But they've been excited about this from the very beginning. They are so supportive. They, I mean, it's cool because I'm their coach, but they're always asking me, how am I feeling? How is training going? They're making sure we have everything we need for our practice run and for our main run. And I really just couldn't ask for a better team of people. As a crew member, it's really whatever is gonna help our runners get um, successfully to the finish and however they define that for themselves. My, uh, my van will be at nine predetermined stops along the race with uh, buckets for our runners, snacks or medical relief or encouragement so that they can uh, refuel and be rejuvenated as they go out for their subsequent leg of the race. Jen was talking about while we were running how she was thinking about doing this race and she was very um, hesitant and rightly so about the amount of training that would go into it. Um, and then when she decided to do it, she sent a text around to Anne, Alexis, and I and said, I'm going to do it. And uh, she, you know, the, all three of us automatically said, I'm in, what can I do? My position on the crew, that pretty much entails figuring out what supplies to bring for Jen and Kara. Um, we've had conferences with all the crew about what they're going to need. It's been really interesting to see the differences between Jen and Kara. They don't always have exactly the same taste in you know, what they need for nutrition, what shoes they like and all that. And it's been really fun seeing those differences with the two of them. My nutrition plan, well, I think you should probably save that one for Jen. She would be the expert. I'm more like a cheeseburger, pizza type of girl and beer. I don't really care about nutrition. Although um, one of the things that I am pushing myself to do more is drink more water and electrolytes. My philosophy about nutrition and training is really about getting the best fuel for your body. Um, when you run a ton of miles, it's easy to just be starving all the time and want to give yourself everything that you possibly can and you have a lot of cravings. And sometimes I have days like that. But for the most part, I really try to think about what is it that my body would need the most and what's going to help me the best. So really trying to get in whole foods, real foods, fruits and vegetables, healthy proteins, and making sure I'm drinking plenty of water, which is actually really hard for me. While training for the 50 mile race, it's important that you have a lot of long runs and according to the book we needed to attempt a 31 mile run also called a 50k so we decided to make a fun race out of it and we plan to run from Malibu California to Palos Verdes California we called it the McWilso 50k and we invited our friends and family to meet us at the finish line Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting nervous. Kara's freaking out. I could work. Yeah. Sure. I'm still not as nervous as my first half. Okay. Yeah. Stop. My first marathon was pretty scary, but my first half was like. Really? It was important to do it because you need to see if you have the stamina to continue to do a 50 mile. Wait, can we Go. stop a second? Okay, let's do it. We decided to do it together for a few reasons. 
We have never really trained together or run together before, so this was going to be a good practice run. Oh, is this our stop? It's not our stop, is it? Yep. <laughs> How's everybody's feet? My left calf is a little bit yeah, uh, tight. Salty plus bar is sweet. Oh, I kind of have saltine. There are saltines in there. That's amazing. How about you, Kara? Oh, I love those. God, it's like Christmas. <laughs> Christmas morning. Great. Great? Yes. Okay. It was also a long training to tackle during a normal work week, and for us to carve out that many hours in a day was a big undertaking. So we decided to do it together on a weekend. We wanted to experience what it was like to have aid stations. We wanted to see what it felt like to have pacers on our run. There were moments where our family met us along the route and seeing them was a great experience. We also wanted to know what things we were missing and what things we needed to incorporate in our training moving forward. So this was one of the most important runs that we took. We had never worked with a crew before and the crew had never crewed anybody before. So it was the perfect opportunity for the crew to know exactly what to expect. At this point, we are perfectly on schedule. Okay. The run terrain gets harder from here on oh, in, yeah, and I they know. get more tired. That's fine. And these were factored on averages. Okay. So we're not going to be early. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I remember when we were running, I was keeping track of how far we had run, and when we got close to 26 miles, I realized that we were in ultra territory. And once we surpassed it, it was so cool to be able to say that we've run our first ultra. It's a moment that you will never forget. Isn't it crazy when our bodies are feeling ready to get I'm like, what? We really considered the McWilso our dry run before the big race. We wanted to experience what it was like to have our family at the end, and if it was emotional or not, and how to prepare for all of this. When we crossed the finish line and saw all of our friends and family, it really started to sink in that we had just run our first ultra marathon. It was pretty emotional. Kara made homemade medals and it's still my favorite medal that I've ever earned. It was so amazing to see everyone we knew that had cheered us on along the way. And for us to cross that finish line was so incredible. It was one of the best days. Today I feel accomplished and really freaking sweaty, but I just ran 24 miles and um, I think this was the longest run I've done solo. I did three this morning early, feels like a century ago, with Alexis and then I finished the rest by myself and I am amazed by what Kara does every day doing all these miles all by herself because it's a whole different type of digging deep for it. Today, I feel like I don't want to run. I'm bored with running. Um, I just wish my race was um, now. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's just do this. I've been training for five months and I'm tired. It's a lot of mileage. We've put in about a thousand miles or so, so far. Dean Carnassus is one of the most famous ultra runners of our generation. He's inspiring. He ran 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. We decided to contact him to see if he had any advice for us since we were running our first ultra marathon. We couldn't believe that he wanted to talk to us. We were starstruck to say the least. You guys um, are really inspiring me actually. Oh, that's Thank so nice you. to hear. No, it's fine. 
It's we're trying to get regular people like us <laughs> just to run and try these ultras. What race do you have coming up? The American River. Ah, uh, AR, yeah. For someone just first approaching it, it's a little intimidating. The last two miles are almost unrunnable. Oh. Okay, when we get to, inevitably, we get to that point in our race where we are just spent. What is it that you do to get through those lows? What I do when it happens is uh, I get very um, in the moment, uh, very present. Uh, I try, it's almost like a zen state. I try not to think about what's in front of me. I don't think about how much further I've got to go. I don't reflect on the past. I just focus literally on, you know, take your next footstep to the best of your ability. Yeah, yeah I and love that. Next. When you race together, the, you know, inevitably, um, one of the two of you are going to have a down point mm -hmm. while the other is feeling up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's either going to become, uh, you know, encouraging or uh, obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Thank you so much for taking yeah. the time. Thank you. I'll let you know how it goes. I know. Yeah, I can't wait to hear. Charge. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You too. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye bye. Oh my god, that was so cool! <laughs> He's so nice! He's so nice. It was like talking to a friend on the yeah, phone. Or like like a mentor. He had a, That was really nice. Yeah. That was very kind. Aww, he has so, so many much cool th things to say. I know. I love the moment thing. Stay in the moment. I think we're going to do that anyway. When I started this, I'm not sure it ever occurred to me that this would make an impact on anybody. But if there's something out there that interests you, go for it. I mean, you only live once. And I think if you really set your mind to it, you can accomplish things you never thought you could. And with my kids, Specifically, I hope that they see that the time I'm putting into running is worthwhile and that they're getting more out of it than, than we're taking away. One of the things I learned from watching regular people and everyday people on YouTube doing these races was that they suddenly became my hero. But then I said, you know, because you, everyone wants to look for a hero. So, oh, help us, guide us, tell us what to do. And what I was seeing was that they were their own hero. And that inspired me to do that. And that's what I hope this message is strong, that I want people to become their own hero. Don't look for someone else to do that for you because it's not going to happen. Today I feel burned out. I'm supposed to run 18 miles and I've run 10 and my legs are mad at me. They did a lot this week, maybe miles and extra workouts. I am at a point where I'm debating if it's smarter to rest them or to push through and get my miles in. So that is why I'm walking and talking. I'm still trying to get miles in. Today I feel um, excited. Yesterday I got a little teary-eyed. Um, I did my last long run. Um, it was 18 miles. It's because I started a goal six months ago and here I am now and I completed it. And whether I finish the 50 miles or not, I'm really proud of myself. That was a lot of mileage. Since Chrissy had been our mentor during this entire process, we reached out to her to get some personal advice. I run a 50 miler in a couple of days. Yeah. Thank you so much. Your book has been so helpful and inspirational. Oh. I can't even tell you. We followed it to the T almost. Pretty Maybe. much to the T. But it's supposed to rain the whole time. Have you trained in that? I did one. Uh, we did do twice. some. <laughs> it doesn't rain a it lot in rain. SoCal. In California, probably not. Not as much, but we did have some rains recently, and mm -hmm. I love the rain, but like 12 hours in the rain seems a little yeah. different than like, oh, I ran six miles in the rain, you know? Yeah. So any uh, advice about that? I would just say not having done it your gear, you don't know how it's going to respond mm -hmm. to the moisture in your skin being wet that long. 
um, anti-chafe, anything is going to be your best friend and in okay. spots that you never would have imagined. Like, do you have any mental note <laughs> to pass along? I always go back to the same one that's even in the book about smiling. There's mm -hmm. the story about my mom when I ran my first Chuck and I, or mm -hmm. first ultra, but was at Chuck and I 50K, that if I didn't look happy or if I was pale yeah. or anything, she was pulling me from the race. <gasps> and so every day she came in smiling. And it was a huge life lesson in that moment of like, all I wanted to do was like express how amazing this was yeah. and the emotional side of it. But I was so like, what, what if I like break down, you know, like yeah. you just go through this whole mental thing. And it was just so simple to just smile when I saw my mom and like, Hey, I'm doing this. This is great. That is That's so awesome. cool. Today I feel nervous because Jen um, showed us the weather report and it looks like thunderstorms, um, drizzle, lots of rain in store for our 50 mile race. Um, the weather could change and that's awesome too. Or this could be a 50 mile Tough Mudder. Ah! Right before the race we got an email and a text message from the race coordinator basically saying to expect rain and that the start line is under water. This added a new complication and now we have to think about the race in a slightly different way. How many pairs of shoes and socks will we need? How will this affect what we wear? What will happen with our crew stops? If it wasn't exciting already, this was really going to shake things up. Because of the different um, weather that's been thrown at us, I wouldn't normally pack this much for a race. But I find myself, it's a long distance, and it's going to be raining, torrentially, supposedly. So, I'm packing three pairs of shoes, and maybe I'll even wear another pair of sneakers up there. And now that we have such bad rains forecasted, everyone's telling me to have, like, maybe three outfits with the uh, crew, just in case. One of the things I was reading in Runner's World, this is why I went out and bought it. I wouldn't have normally bought a rain jacket for a race, but... 50 miles is a long time, and this, um, it, it looks like that that's what might be the weather. Plus, I like it anyway. It's really nice. Um, I found it in Runner's World. They recommended it for runners. Um, it's Columbia Titanium, and I have to tell you, it's really lightweight. I can pack it up, and also, it's going to keep me dry, and that's going to make me happy, because no one wants a wet, yucky. I was planning, like before the forecast, I was planning on having two shoes. These are road runners and then these are trail runners. And so that was just two and then if I needed to switch halfway I could switch. But now I'm wondering if I actually need four, like a backup for each of these shoes. So I have my old trail runners and then I have my old road runners. Um, it feels a bit out of control. Um, but better safe than sorry, I think, is the motto I'm going with. I brought two packs of toilet paper, and that's because I hope I go in the bathroom, I do, but there might be a chance I will have to go into the woods. So, that's it. I'm excited for the American River 50. Let's do this, woo! Now that we're in Folsom, it's raining <laughs> and has been for a while. That means where there is rain, there is mud. I think we are in for quite the adventure. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm getting my bib now. Look at my poor mom. She's like, I haven't even walking this far. <laughs> I'm with her. I'm here picking up my race packet for tomorrow. This is nuts. Hi. McMahon, M C M A. Yes, fifty. 
The night before the race, um, we had a huge party for all the people who came, our crew, fans, family. It was so much fun. There was at least 26 people there. Um, I was joking with Jen and said that it was like our rehearsal dinner for before you get married. And she came in a little bit late because she had to pick up her bib and it felt like she was getting her marriage license and we were really doing this thing. Um, and we had the same nerves as you would the night before a wedding. <laughs> How do you feel? Um, today I feel very calm, which is a very strange thing to say because usually before a race I want to throw up. I can't go to the bathroom. I'm having a heart attack. My heart's beating. And because all you guys are here, I feel... I feel very calm. I do, I really do. And I got downstairs, met everybody around 4.30. We looked outside and it was raining. It was raining really hard, like a movie set hard. You couldn't believe how hard it was raining. I was like, this is a joke, isn't it? It's a joke. How'd you sleep? Sleep? What's that? I didn't sleep at all, hardly. I think I slept at about, I think I slept about three hours total. Like, I could not sleep. It was crazy. I don't, I didn't feel as nervous as I thought I would. I kind of expected to have butterflies and, and be worried about the, re the weather and things like that. But I ended up just being ready, like calm and ready to go. My mother-in-law just sent me a text and she was saying that her friend's going to be running it and he's really slow and he's ran it 20 times already. And um, he said, do you to the race? Do not. I'm such a whip. That's ultra right there. Anyway, so he said, don't go out fast. Don't do 19 miles. Like, because you're going to get fooled. And I've been hearing this a lot. And also, it doesn't matter what you wear, even though I'm wearing this super dry jacket, you're going to get wet. So we were talking to a couple people, and you should be prepared for water crossings. I get scared when I cross water and wash it out. <laughs> it's the true story. Um, um, this happened in uh, third grade. I was in Girl Scouts <laughs> and I crossed the rest of the class. <laughs> oh, no, <you're> the rocks. <laughs> and I fell in and for a whole year they called me swampy. I didn't like that very much. So I'm a little bit more afraid of water than most people when I'm in out in nature. <laughs> well, it's not so bad. It feels mild, right? This is mild. Oh, I wanted to tell Jen I got um I downloaded all the music. <laughs> yes, would you guys like to hear some of the songs I picked? Yeah. For the rain. I love a rainy night. Have you ever seen the rain? Here comes the rain again. I wish it would rain. Blame it on the rain. <laughs> it never rains in Southern California. Except for right now. Liars. We're in Northern California. Yes, that's true. Well, we accomplished this, Jen. We are truly badass. No. Do we get two medals for doing it in two the rain? Medals. Yeah. And crossing up, rivers? We're picking up other people's medals this year. Uh, a lot of crossing. <laughs> I'm not going to think of it as the number. I think yeah, I'm just either. Think today we're just going to enjoy the moment. We're just going to be out all day in the rain, in the mud. That's all we're doing. you got to embrace yeah. this. Start off slow, the taper from the there, and don't forget to smile. Yes. Smiling is good. Smiling is my favorite. <laughs> so we get to the actual race, and we had to walk in the rain with umbrellas down to the tent. Why do people do this? <laughs> We got there and I remember distinctly that we got all the way down to the start line and on the clock there was 36 minutes. So we had to stand in the rain for 36 minutes. We, we took our umbrellas and garbage bags and all that nonsense and we went down and we all huddled, all the racers, under the tent. 
and we were all waiting for the star of the race as we watched sheets and sheets of rain come pouring down. What I like about the rain and the mud and all the stuff is that it's giving me other things to think about. Yes. Like, it's like the running is like low priority now. It's like the rain is, has We just have to get through it. I'm still not nervous, which is strange, okay? But I think because we're just going to have fun and we're not going to think about the mileage anymore. I mean, this isn't pretty much a fucking disaster, so let's just have fun. Yeah. Right? Okay. Once we finally got to go, that's when I started to get a little bit nervous. Like, the everyone approached the start line, and you really just didn't know what to expect. I know. So we start running, the guns go off, everyone's going charge, hey! And we're all laughing and giggling. Once they like let us off to go, we realized kind of what we were in for. It was pouring down rain and there was this huge mud puddle, which when I first looked at it, just looked like a river running down the trail. And pretty quickly as we started going, everyone was right on top of each other. You, you had to be in a single file line for most of it at the beginning because there was only one way to go. A man ran by me and he screamed, just run into the puddle. And I thought to myself, all right, he's right. We gotta just do this, let's just do this. So we did it and um, it was a really cool sight to see everybody with their headlamps running single file down this trail. You couldn't really cut anyone unless you were a complete elite athlete. So you just, stayed in the mud, single file. And about third or second mile in, I started watching grown men, I mean big guys, f slipping and sliding. And that was when the fear started settling in. And I thought to myself, what am I doing? What am I, what have I gotten myself into? We were pretty drenched and they were giving out potato chips and I think donuts and other junk food and stuff. It was one of my favorite aid stations. Um, our crew wasn't there or anything like that, but it was the first time we were welcomed with all the treats and the, the special sodas. We changed out of our muddy, gross socks and into dry socks, <laughs> and that felt like the best decision ever in the whole world for about four minutes until we had to cross the next river or go into the next mud or whatever, and basically, we learned a quick lesson there, like that it felt so good to change out of those socks, but really there was no point. It was muddy and wet for the entire rest of the race. That was some muddy fun, crazy, slippery. We went through um, a puddle that was uh, almost knee deep, but. Oh my God. But we couldn't tell until we stepped in it. <laughs> We get to our first cruise station. They are so happy to see us. And we see all these people and they just warm our heart. We first saw Jen and Kara at about the 20 mile mark. The sun's coming out for you. I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know either. We got to see all of our free planning unfold. We had our table set up, our camp chairs, our uh, camp stove ready for our runners to come in. And, um, and there was frankly some jealousy. I felt pretty proud of what we'd set up here that we had envious of the station that our folks were getting and the moment there of the like larger running community felt so special because we were there to crew our friends but also to support and be amazed by all these other runners who had come through. About mile 20 they um we saw our crew I was so excited to see them and then um we changed their shoes there. And there, I believe, I don't know who was changing mine, I think it was Alexis. She was washing my feet like I was Jesus. And it was hysterical. I was like, I felt like a disciple or something. Um, let me do this for a little more on the bottom. Mm -hmm. No, that feels amazing. You want me to read? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming over here. Oh, I got to say, mama like you. <laughs> Let's dry these feet up. Hold on to my back. Lift up your foot. Oh my God, you guys are amazing. This is 
But it was so lovely. And I don't know if I needed to change my shoes at that point, but my God, it felt fantastic. And we ate and we had a great time. I can get used to this. I could be a princess for reals. How are we doing with time? It is. Yes. 10.45. Is that all right? I don't know. Yeah, we really been out there for... Are we chasing cutoff? No. No. Okay. That's kind of what I expected. Okay, I think I'm good. Lots of people cheering you on Instagram, guys. Yeah. See you there, guys. I remember distinctly right around mile 20 to 25-ish, the, the sun started to poke out a little bit and we were on a flat road for a while and that was super boring. We were like, could we just get back into the trails? We were having so much fun in the trails and in the mud. At mile 25, our husbands became our pacers for the next six miles. We can have one pacer each starting at mile 25 through the end of the race. And the pacers can change at designated areas. It was such a welcome comic relief to have our husbands run with us. What a blast. <laughs> Suck it up, princesses. <laughs> First time we ever ran all together. I know. This is cute. Adorable. It's like a double date. Only I would hate this. Next people. time, let's go to the movies. <laughs> Maybe if Jen's in front, she'll set her pace. I've got to be the pacer now? What kind of shit is that? Right. Oh, my knees are so angry. Knees? Yeah. Oh. They just feel like they're locking up. They don't feel like anything's wrong with them. They just feel like kind of... Um... It's because you probably can't get into a pace. I just want to know roughly what time we're going to be done. Oh, did get done? Will we be done before 6? You could be, but you would have to do the second half at the exact same speed as your first half. Which, which actually isn't that unrealistic. You should have seen our first few miles. We were completely soaked in the black. Yeah, it was like rivers. It was crazy. All right. Well, we were wondering why it took you so damn long to get the halfway point. Yeah, 30 miles so far. Nobody knows where we started. Oh! Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, you're right here. Just lay I'm good. Here. No, I'm a, got you a good? cramp. Here, give me. Give me a cramp? You want to sit? No, just stick me up. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Happy. Mentally, she's fine. She said her knees were starting to hurt a little bit, um, which is not like her. She really doesn't usually have much knee pain, um, so I was a little worried about that. But other than that, her attitude seems fine. Her energy seems fine. The girls were kind of in and a little bit out. Like sometimes they were really up, and sometimes they were kind of like zoning out a little bit. But we could, we just tried to keep it light and have fun and keep them laughing. How's your stomach holding up? Good. Yeah. Okay. We're burning calories for sure. <laughs> Do you want some sugar? Gummy bears? Peanut butter? She, she just sunscreened her. I know, I'm just gonna turn it off. Want me to wash your feet? <laughs> yeah, we, well, we won't sit long. Jen, there's a peanut butter sandwich for here, here, here and ramen. If you want ramen. Okay. Okay, okay ramen. Oh, I double knotted, sorry. That's okay, that's okay, we'll get it. Sit right here next to you. 
You ladies are so amazing. Thank you oh, for you all your are amazing. I feel like I I'm not telling you ago, enough. So. Okay. You got wet this morning. All that rainstorm this morning. Does it seem like five days ago? That's what Jen's saying. Last week? Yeah, I remember the rainstorm. I am going to run alongside them for the next 11 miles to encourage them or yell at them to keep their spirits up and keep them moving until I hand off to my friend Anne. We'll see what we can do. We're about an hour ahead of cutoff right now, so we're going to try to keep up the pace. My knee started bothering me about halfway through the race. Every time I would stop, I would try to stretch my quad and stretch my IT band, and nothing helped. I just felt really tight, and I could not loosen up that, that knee. I have to stop for a second. I mean, I can walk, but my knee is hurting so bad. Oh, shit, I have IOC hack down. And that's East Station. Oh, it's on Saturday. Okay. Oh, it is so bad, all that. Ah, I heard later that we were slow when we were running with the husbands, but we didn't know it at the time. Um, because as soon as the husbands were done running after their five miles, Alexis came on board. And we ran with Alexis for 11 miles, and she was amazing. Right side. About four miles in was the first time I got scared for the first time in my life at a race. And it wasn't because I was hurt or injured or it was because Alexis told us, you might DNF. I'm happy to hustle you if you want it. I'm watching, but I'm watching like the DNF, yeah. not a pace. And are we at risk of hitting that? Do you want to know, or do you want me to just encourage you? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I just was asking which, which version you wanted. I guess I want to know. You left the last station 55 minutes before the DNF cut. So currently, you're about an hour ahead. The cutoff at our 11 mile mark, yeah. Rattlesnake, is 5.15 p.m. So I'm gonna try the best I can to keep you okay. landing with the same one hour cushion. Yeah, that'd be great, okay. I wouldn't be worried about it if we knew what your body and the trail did north of 5.30, you know? And I said, what? I didn't comprehend, what do you mean? What do you mean we might not finish? She's like, you have a very big chance that you're gonna DNF if you don't hurry up and hustle. That's all she needed to say. We got on our little jet backs and we went running and we ran hard and we kept up a good pace. Can they pull you off? I think it's just closed at that point. Like, yeah, like, like it will be closed, but you won't cross an actual finish line, but you'll still get there. This is true. She kind of is probably the first person that made us a little nervous about time. We started to um, worry that we were behind what we were expecting or what we were hoping and maybe even behind like cut off goals. There were many times we would be in the flow running along and we would see a certain runner and we'd pass them and then they'd pass us and then we'd pass them. So you kind of felt like you've got these little unspoken relationships with people because you'd see them for a while. We found this woman who is this unbelievable pacer. Her name was Kelly and her partner was um, Bernadette and we followed them. I followed everything. Bernadette, if she made a move this way, I made a move this way. I was finishing that race. I just remember there were many times during that 11 miles with Alexis where I just kept trying to stop and really take a moment to 
appreciate my surroundings. It was like the most beautiful course you've ever seen. The sky was gorgeous. Um, and you, but you really did have to be pretty aware of the moment you were in because the trails were quite technical. You could easily slip or, I don't know, go fall down, I don't know, some cliff or something. So there was a lot of just, just staying in the moment and just being aware of my surroundings and that was really cool. Man, the people in front of me have been so amazing. <laughs> they just keep moving. <laughs> it's really all it takes. <laughs> yep. This is a low bar. Just don't I'm not sit down. Picky. Don't sit down and you're my new best friend. I am gonna be running Jen and Kara in this last nine miles. I'm totally excited. They look really good, really strong and I'm really looking forward to it. I heard it's a really pretty um, part of the trail. And then Anne came in and even Bernadette switched pacers as well. So I remember being like oh, aware of her and is she going ahead and you know making sure we could kind of keep up if we could. Can we go of some kind? Yeah. Cool. Did Bernadette leave? my phone. Good. Let him know to start chipping off miles. Knock him down. Give it to me. All right. Take those salt No pain. You got it. This way, guys. You got this. Nine more miles. You can do this. Mile 41, we got our new pacer, and she was so excited, Anne. And um, the background about Anne is that she also runs with Jen just as Alexis does, but she's also like an avid hiker. So these last couple of miles are gonna be all uphill. And if we didn't think it was bad before, it was about to be pretty bad. So um, I was on this big high. And then all of a sudden, right at mile 41, as we're beginning the race, I can't breathe. I just can't breathe. I, the minute we go up the hill, Something was happening to me. Okay, Kara. We gotta put our game faces on. Come on. Just, this isn't, this is gonna flatten out here in a minute. Okay? Okay. Oh, son of a bitch. No, no, we have to keep moving. Keep moving. Even if it's just a little step, just try to keep moving. Feet close together. No big step. And then once Anne came in, oh man. <laughs> I remember kind of the very first part of our section with Anne was indicative of the remainder of the race. We didn't know it at the time. But we had to go down this big, steep trail to the aid station. And then we had to go back up the same way to get out. That was mentally tough. And it was physically tough. Let me. Okay. It's just you... a little down a little. You could be a little down, but you know what? You guys, we only have less than nine miles to go. We're single digits. Not a lot of time. I actually went to the bathroom and I peed for like five minutes. I know. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess I did have to go. I was talking to you for a while now. That's a good sign. You're hydrated. Yeah. yeah. How about you? Are you peeing, Jen? Oh, yeah. I peed too for a while. Okay. Then you guys are keeping hydrated. Them. <laughs> What did she do? In the woods and I almost got depressed. Oh. I was like ready to jump on the cliff. Oh. <laughs> we don't need no Oh, chicken. because we were so because our our pace was so slow. Oh. And then this, you guys are gonna DNF. These and people. Like, oh. She. Yeah. It, 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 hey. She just said, "Do you want to know?" It kind of lit a fire under our. Yeah. Eyes. Your hip. No. Your knee. Oh. It's okay. Just keep moving, Jen. You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing awesome. Just forward, forward bound. Come on, Tylenol. Oh, 
Okay. You okay? All right, slowly. Okay. You just speak up, it's okay. Doing good, just keep moving. Gonna get drink a little? Did you get your food in you? You can do this. You can do this. We're almost done. We just got a couple more miles on this flat section, and then the last will be hilly, but we'll be so damn glad to get this done. We won't care. That's cool, you guys. Is that we're gonna do it? That's right. We're doing it, and we're almost there. There's no other choice right now. We got this. You guys are doing great. You look good. You look great. Kara, I can't believe you're saying your legs feel good. That's a great sign. No, you so That's you awesome. Feel so bad, but I get I'm tired. My body's tired. Yeah. Well, we don't have much to go. This is the mental bit. That's this right. Push. You all right? Do you need a little water? I'm having a little bit of breathing. Okay. Issues. Okay. I think I just... Okay, just hold on. Just take a deep breath. Okay. Okay, you okay? I know we can do this. Okay, I know you can I Okay, can do, do it. This. We're only going to be out here another hour. We're only going to be out here another hour and a half or so, and it's all going to be... You're going to be done. Good you can suck it up for an hour and a half, right? A little bit of discomfort, but you can do it. Yeah. Okay, Kara's resting just a minute. Okay, you all right? Okay. 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 All right. Yep. Okay, if you can't run, just keep moving. You're doing great. Just keep moving. Kara, are you okay? Try to take a little slow down on your breathing. Slow, take it slow. One step in front of the other, there's no One other step at a choice. Time. Woo. Enjoy the moment. There's a little step there. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, keep it up. Come on, you got this. We're getting close. You guys, I home stretch. We need a home stretch. Come on, this is it. A little bit more pain, but we're almost there. Just keep moving forward. We can't walk backwards. Yeah. Can't walk back. Nobody's gonna come pick us up. We just gotta get there. No. One foot in front of the other. We're getting closer every step. But what's really cool about the portion with Anne was that um, I really did not have an awareness for how long it would really take us to finish that race. In my head, I thought we only have I don't know, nine miles, you know, to go or six or whatever it was at the point. And I'm thinking like, we're, we got this. And honestly, she kept saying we have all this time, but she was super worried about time. And in my head, I couldn't figure out why that would be like, but it's because we were going really slowly, but it didn't feel like, it feel like we're giving full effort, but you know, full effort at 40 something miles in is not a fast pace. So, um, and on top of it, we're still dealing with that technical terrain and a lot of mud. And so even when you felt like you had the energy to run, or if my knees weren't hurting too bad and I felt like I could run, a lot of times you couldn't run because you didn't want to slip and fall. I think three miles up the hill, we're right. going to need that hour. Okay. For sure. Okay. So, 
Um, so let's move it a little here. Move it as much as we can the next mile or so. Keep going here. Okay, you can do this. You can do this. We're, we have to keep moving to make it in okay. by eight. We've got three miles, that's it. Okay. You're gonna be okay. okay. Just keep moving. The time is uh, 6.48, okay? Well, the thing is though, the hills are gonna, it's gonna take, it could take a half hour for one mile up the hill. Okay, so that means we're gonna be fine if we just move to this first aid station a little quicker. Yeah, I know. Okay? Well, no, but I mean, let's get to the first aid station. We got a quarter mile or so. Okay. So can you just run a little bit to the next aid station? We're running up this hill. I mean, I was running. I was just basically bearing, begging Kara to come. Come on, you can do it. One foot in front of the other. Let's go. And then I turn and I see Aga. And I was like, oh my God, there's people we know. Like, we felt like we were in the middle of nowhere. So it was really cool to see her. And she was there with the camera. And I'm like, oh my God, there's Aga. Let's run towards Aga. Let's do this. And at that moment, I just had so much energy. And I could not wait to finish this thing. Keep breathing, Kara. You have this. The aid station's up ahead. Come on. And I think I had temporary asthma. It's when your skin gets really wet, but you're filling you your lungs guys. with dry air. And it doesn't happen to all runners or whatever. It was just happening to me. And the more we climbed, I was just it was just getting worse. And my legs felt fantastic. My legs were like, I could run this whole thing home. You got it, Kara. Yeah, Jen. All right. Last gap, gasp right here. We get to the final gasp. I am so mad at Anne. I'm not mad at Anne. And this is where I hold regrets because in the ultra, at this last part of it, I did feel like I was intoxicated. And sometimes when you're drunk or whatever, you make stupid decisions and you'll regret it the next day. And that's how I felt when I was running with Anne. She's like, come on girls, let's get moving. And I'm like, screw you, my body. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. This is all I kept saying, like, leave me alone. I just want to hike. And she's like, get your butt moving. Get it done now. Hey, that was the bitch of an incline, okay? For me to breathe. Okay, all right. I'm trying. I know you are. I know. You have two more miles from this sign. You also have about an hour, so you're gonna make it. You're gonna make the jacket, okay? Two miles. Two miles. There we go. Push it out, baby. Let's do it, deep right here. You guys are doing amazing. Uh, you know what, I think I'll be okay when I just stop damn moving. Oh, yeah. my, my camera might have been still a little something here. That's just Whose brilliant idea was this? Oh, oh, I think that was Kara's idea. <laughs> We're gonna feel so good very soon. <laughs> oh look, it's Bernadette! I think she's all bummed that you caught up to her. Yeah, she's <laughs> and you're so all <laughs> she's trying to lose her all day. Good job. Nice. Oh my God. You're you're right, you got this. You got it. Oh. Take him down. Okay. You got it, baby. Come on, 
30 minutes. We're going to round that bend and we're home. So we got this. to the second orange flag. Turn, you kind of dip down Come on. To the okay, here. we got it. Right. We got it. This is it, girls. This is it. Here we go. You hear it? You hear it? They did great and they were so supportive of each other and it was really just a great experience. I'm so happy for them. You can do anything you want, but you really have to train for it. 
You have to work for it, no matter what it is. I just learned I could do something tough. And there was never even one ounce of me that day that felt like I was gonna give up.